Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie, and I am excited to talk to you about zippers. My goal today is to take away any fear you might have of making and installing zippers. Zippers really are easy. I really appreciate having zippers on my projects. It's so nice to know that if my purse falls off the car seat, everything will stay put. I won't be digging around under the seat trying to find everything that fell out. But I have to confess, when I started making purses and bags, the scariest part was installing a zipper. All I could remember was my high school home ec experience of installing a zipper in a skirt. We began by sewing a 5 8 inch seam and pressing the seam open. Then we centered a zipper on the seam, and that's where it got tricky. Sewing from the back, we had to get that zipper sewn in with a seam that was straight and even and equal on each side. And of course, we had to do this with a striped or plaid fabric. They definitely did not set us up for success. I knew I had to figure out an easier way, and I did. The methods of zipper installation that we use in our projects are so simple and easy. You are going to love them. Before we start talking about how to install zippers, let's talk about what kind of zipper to use. All zippers are not alike, and using the proper zipper will make everything so much easier. At Biani, we recommend handbag zippers for our projects. Biani's handbag zippers are number 4.5 nylon coil zippers made by YKK. They come in single slide and double slide luggage style configurations, as well as in our versatile zippers by the yard. Let's talk about what all that means. First, handbag zippers are specifically designed for purses and bags. They are wider and have larger pulls than a dress zipper and are designed for the added wear and tear that a handbag gets. Just think how many times a day you zip or unzip your dress compared to the number of times that you are in and out of your purse each day. Second, think about how hard it would be to replace a zipper in your purse or bag and you'll understand why it makes sense to choose a zipper that is designed to withstand that type of use and abuse. The number 4.5 refers to the gauge of the zipper and is determined by the width of the zipper teeth. As the numbers increase, the size of the teeth and the tape increase as well. So, a regular dress zipper, which is a number 3 zipper, has narrower teeth and tape than a number 4.5 handbag zipper. The wider tape on a handbag zipper makes it more sturdy and durable. It also makes insertion of the zipper easier. And because more of the tape shows, it gives a decorative element to the project. Just as you want to pick the best quality fabrics for your projects, you also want to pick the best quality zippers. By Annie's handbag zippers are made by YKK, long recognized as the leader in the zipper market. YKK makes consistently high quality zippers on top-notch equipment. There is a reason why they make roughly half the zippers on Earth, over 7 billion each year. By Annie's handbag zippers are nylon coil zippers. This means they are made of a continuous coil chain made of nylon. They are soft and flexible, yet sturdy zip after zip. They're lightweight, so they don't make your purse or bag heavy. A nylon coil zipper is also heat resistant and rust proof and easy to repair if a tooth gets out of alignment. The nylon coil easily corrects itself by just zipping and unzipping past the point where the tooth is misaligned. And unlike sports zippers with chunky molded plastic teeth or zippers with metal teeth, it is easy to cut and sew through a nylon coil zipper. This makes installation easy. Another benefit of a nylon coil zipper is that sliders can be put onto the zipper chain from either direction and the zipper will still function. This makes it easy to make double slide luggage style zippers for purses and bags or to make a bag using just one side of a piece of zipper tape. Let's talk next about the sizes and styles of handbag zippers that Biani carries. Our shortest zippers are 24 inches and these are all single slide zippers. This means the zipper has just one slide and it will open in just one direction. 
We often need zippers shorter than 24 inches, but I never worry about using a 24 inch zipper in a smaller project. As I'll show you soon, using a zipper that is longer than the opening makes everything so much easier, and it's easy to attach a slide to any leftover tape. Our 30 and 40 inch zippers are double slide zippers. This means that the zipper has two zipper slides. By Annie's double slide zippers are luggage style zippers. The slides are attached head to head or rounded end to rounded end so that they kiss in the middle when closed. This enables you to open or close your bag from either end and to keep the bag partially closed on one or both sides. We have one more awesome zipper product which we call Zippers by the Yard. These are open end zippers, which means there are no stops. This enables you to make zippers of any length or style, single slide, double slide, multi-slide, or luggage style. The choice is yours. We package by Annie's zippers by the yard with four yards of zipper chain and 16 separate slides or pulls. So you can make up to 16 nine inch zippers, one 144 inch zipper, or any number of sizes and styles in between. Let's watch part of our free Zippers Are Easy Make Zippers of Any Length and Style video to see how easy it is to make custom zippers. One of the best features of Biani's Zippers by the Yard is that there are no stops on the ends, and each end has about three quarters of an inch of fabric before the teeth start. Having that extra fabric on the end makes a big difference when you attach the slides, which you'll see as we proceed. There are some special advantages to using zippers by the yard, but I'll also show you how to customize other sizes of zippers too, such as our 24 inch single slide or our 30 and 40 inch double slide zippers. Let's get started. There are five simple steps to making your own zippers. Mark links, attach slides, move the desired number of slides into each marked section, stitch to create zipper stops, and cut on the marked lines. The first step is to mark the lengths needed on the zipper tape. I always prefer to do this first, as it's so much easier to mark lengths with a ruler when there are no zipper slides in the way. Because the extra fabric at the end of the zipper tape makes attaching zipper slides so much easier, especially if you are making a luggage style zipper, you are going to want to preserve one of the fabric ends of the tape until you've made all your zippers. So here's an important tip. Do all your marking and cutting from one end and attach your zipper slides from the other end. If you establish that habit, you'll always have the luxury of using the fabric end for attaching slides, and you won't have to deal with attaching slides to a cut end. Since this is a brand new piece of zippers by the yard, both of my ends have fabric before the teeth start, so I can mark from either end. However, once I've cut zippers off the tape, one of these ends will be cut. So the next time I grab this piece of zipper tape, I want to be sure I mark from the cut end, not the fabric end. This will all make more sense soon. For this demonstration, let's assume that we're making a purse that requires three zippers. One 15 inch single slide zipper for an outer pocket, one 15 inch zipper with two slides for an inner divided pocket, and one 28 inch double slide luggage style zipper to close the bag. We'll begin by marking the first length needed, in this case 15 inches on the tape, being careful to measure from the end of the teeth, not the end of the tape. So I'm going to get my ruler, I'm going to align the 15 inch line right at the end of the teeth, right here, not at the end of the tape, and then I will mark a line across the zipper tape at that point. I like to use a pencil when I do this so that I've got a line that's going to be easy to see. It doesn't have to be something removable because when we cut our zippers apart, we're going to cut on that line, so it will disappear. Then we're going to mark each succeeding line measuring from the previous line. So we'll mark another line 15 inches away. So we'll align our 15 inch mark on our marked line and we'll mark a line across the tape and then we're going to mark a line 28 inches away from there. So to do that, I have to move my ruler once. So we're going to go, there's 24, and that's right there. And then I'll scoop my line down to four inches 
and I'll mark right across there. So there's my 28 inch. I've got two 15 inches and a 28 inch one marked. Keep in mind that you can also use our other sizes of handbag zippers to make the lengths you need. For instance, you could use a 30 inch double slide zipper to make the two 15 inch zippers needed for the project. To do that, move both of the zipper slides to one end to get them out of the way. Then mark from the other end, this time making sure that you're measuring from the outside of the stop at the end, again not the end of the tape. So you'll align your 15 inch mark at the outside of the stop and mark across your tape and you've got your two 15 inch zippers marked and ready to go. Step two is to attach the zipper slides. Before we start, let's take a quick look at a zipper slide. If you look at it from the back, you will see that there is a flat end and a rounded end. The rounded end has two channels, one on each side, and the flat end has just one. As you can see on this zipper, if you move the slide toward the flat end of the zipper, the zipper opens because the rounded end is separating the teeth. If you move the slide toward the rounded end, it closes because the flat end is mashing the teeth together. I'm going to show you two different ways to attach the zipper slides and we'll talk about when and why to use each method. The first method involves attaching the zipper slide from the rounded end of the slide. This is the method that I use when making a single slide zipper. I like attaching from the rounded end because it keeps my zipper tape closed, which makes it easier to stitch and cut in the next steps. This is also the best way to attach a zipper slide to zipper tape that has been cut. I'll show you how to use this method to attach slides to cut tape in a bit, but for now we're going to concentrate on attaching slides to the zippers by the yard tape. Here's an important tip. Don't forget that we are attaching the zipper slides from the other end of the tape from where we marked, and then we're going to move them down into the marked end. This means that we need to attach the slides in the order that they were marked. So our first step will be to attach a slide for the first zipper that we marked on the tape, which was the 15 inch single slide zipper. First, make sure that your zipper tape is right side up. This is where you see the teeth. The teeth aren't visible on the wrong side. And again, make sure you're working on the unmarked end. Remember, mark and cut from that end, attach slides from this end. Because the rounded end of the zipper slide has two channels, we need to first separate the zipper tape so that we have two pieces, one for each channel on the slide. So just pull the zipper tape apart to separate it. Don't be shy about this. It's easier to work with a few inches of tape than just a little bit. Now we will insert one side of the tape into each side of the slide. Insert the left side of the tape into the channel on the left, then insert the right side of the tape into the channel on the right. Make sure that the tape is nice and even at the top, then hold onto the tape with one hand and use your other hand to pull down on the slide and your first zipper slide is attached. It's very similar to closing the zipper on a jacket. Easy peasy, huh? The next zipper we marked was for a 15 inch multi-slide zipper. We're using it for a divided pocket, so we want it to have two slides, one for each section. And we want the slides to both be to the left when the pocket is closed. So we'll attach each of those slides from the rounded end so they slide in the same direction just as we did for our first zipper. So we'll pull our zipper tape apart. We'll pull on a slide from the left, insert the tape from the right, hold on to the tape, and pull down on our slide. We'll do the same thing to attach the next slide. Okay, we've got our zipper slides attached for the two 15 inch zippers, and now it's time to learn something new. For the last zipper, which was marked at 28 inches, we want two slides, but rather than having them go the same direction, we want to attach them in a luggage style configuration. On a luggage style zipper, the rounded ends kiss in the middle. This enables us to open the bag out toward either side and to close it toward the middle. 
When I started making my own zippers, I thought that zipper slides could only be attached from the rounded end. So in order to make a luggage style zipper, I had to pull on one slide from each end in order to get the rounded ends to kiss in the middle. Well, it was really easy to make the first zipper from a new piece of zippers by the yard in this manner because my new piece of zippers by the yard had fabric on each end without teeth. But once I'd made one zipper, it would be necessary to cut the zipper tape in order to attach the next slide in the proper place, and then I'd no longer have the luxury of that extra three-quarter inch of fabric without teeth at the end. It's certainly very doable to attach a slide straight on to cut tape, and I'll show you how to do that soon. But for now, let's focus on the benefits of using zippers by the yard tape as I show you the second method of attaching zipper slides. We call this Casey's method. My son Casey watched me demonstrating how to attach zipper slides one day and heard me say, you have to put the slides on from the rounded end. You can't put them on from the flat end. Well, like many of us, Casey doesn't just accept that you have to do something only one way. So he promptly set out to see if that was true. And lucky for us, in the process, he discovered a method that makes things extra easy and involves putting some of the slides on from the flat end. Leave it to a guy. Please keep in mind that his method really only works with zippers by the yard. You have to have the extra tape without teeth at the end to make it easy. Here's how Casey's method works. For this zipper, we're going to start by attaching the slide beginning with the flat end, the one with just one opening. Because there's just one opening, we want to have just one piece of zipper tape. So we are not going to pull the tape apart until the slide is in place. And while that doesn't seem like a big deal, the beauty of this method is that it allows us to attach the slide to close zipper tape from the top end, and when we're done, the rounded end of the slide is going to be at the top. In order to make sure that your finished zipper doesn't have bubbles in the tape, you want to make sure that the tape is nice and even at the top before you start attaching the slides. So if your tape has gotten a bit wonky as you, aligned the, as you put on the other slides and it isn't aligned evenly, I'd suggest that you separate the tape and attach a slide from the rounded end just as we did before, making sure to align the ends before you pull down on the slide. You can always just remove that slide later when you cut apart the zippers. Our tape looks fine, so we don't need to mess with that now. So we're going to slide the next slide onto the top end of the zipper tape, beginning with the flat end of the slide and making sure that the zipper tape is completely closed and aligned really evenly at the top. I find it easiest to do this if I hold the tape together at the top and then slide the tape into the opening on the flat end of the slide. Then just let the slide drop onto the tape. It will stop when it hits the teeth. In fact, you will notice that I could pull on this slide all day and it's not going anywhere. Can you see why I thought it wouldn't work to attach a slide from the flat end? Well, Casey figured out that once you get the slide to this point, all you have to do is put one hand here, one hand here, give a little pull on the tape to separate it, and voila, our next slide with the rounded end up or toward the middle is attached. Isn't that easy? And now our zipper tape is separated and in perfect position for attaching the next slide from the rounded end, which is exactly what we want for a luggage style zipper where the rounded ends kiss in the middle. Just as before, slide one side of the tape into each side of the slide. Then make sure that the tape is lined up just as it was on the previous slide and pull down on the zipper slide. You've got a perfect double slide luggage style zipper. Because we carefully lined up the zipper tape the same as we attached each slide, the slides fit together perfectly and we don't have any bubbles or lumps in the tape. Isn't that awesome? And that's how easy it is to make a double slide luggage style zipper using zippers by the yard. But what if you're using leftover zipper tape from another project? Or what if you forgot about cutting from one end and attaching poles from the other end and now you've cut both ends of the zipper tape? Now what? Let's talk next about how to attach a zipper slide to cut zipper tape. You may have started with a 24 inch single slide zipper but only used 15 inches of it. 
You've got 9 inches left, which is perfect for your next project, but it needs a slide. Or you used a 30 inch double slide zipper to make two 15 inch zippers, but on one of them you want to have two slides for a divided pocket. Here's what you need to know about attaching the slides. First and most important, attach the zipper slide from the rounded end as we did in the first method I showed you. Because the rounded end has two openings, you will need to separate the zipper tape so that you have two pieces. Pull it apart a few inches. Slide the left side of the tape into the left channel of the slide. Slide the right side of the tape into the right channel of the slide. Don't go too far into the slide. I like to go about halfway. Now you're going to see what's different about attaching a slide to cut zipper tape compared to zippers by the yard. Remember how the zippers by the yard tape had the extra fabric on at the top, which enabled us to hold the tape and use our other hand to pull down on the slide? Well, cut tape doesn't give you that luxury. I've got one hand holding this side of the tape, the other hand holding this side of the tape. I don't have a third hand to pull down on the slide. If I was demonstrating this to you in person, I'd just turn to you and say, can you pull down on the slide? And if you're working at home and have someone close at hand, that's really a great option, especially when you're first learning to do this. But what happens if you're home alone? Or you're up on a stage demonstrating with no one else around, as I was a year or two ago? Yep, I used my teeth. And when I finished with that demo, a nice lady came up and said, I'm a dentist. Your teeth are not meant to pull on zipper slides. Stop that. If you have to get that fixed, it'll cost you $1,000. Well, I can think of way better ways to spend a thousand dollars than sitting in a dentist chair. And I'm so glad she said it to me because I went home and started to practice. And I discovered that if I, that if I only slide the zipper tape part way into the slides, once I get it to that stage, all I have to do is take this finger and give the slide a little tap or two, which engages it with the teeth and locks it in place. Then I can grab the end give it a pull, and my zipper slide is attached. It really is easy once you get the hang of it. Now, what if you want to make a double slide luggage style zipper using the cut tape? In that case, make sure that you attach the second zipper slide so that the rounded ends will kiss in the middle. This means you have to attach the zipper slide from the end where the rounded end is. So you're going to, it's going to depend on how you've made your tape. On this one, which we cut off of a double slide zipper, our rounded end is at the top. So we're going to cut this off and attach this slide on this end. On this one where I had leftover zipper tape without a slide, I added a slide and now my open end and my round end is on this end. So on this one, I'm actually going to have to cut across the tape to remove the slide so that I can attach the slide on this end. To ensure that you don't get a bubble in the tape, here are some tips. We're going to work on this zipper. First, I'm going to cut across the tape before I start so that I make sure my ends are nice and even. This will help eliminate bubbles in the teeth tape if the teeth don't line up perfectly. I also like to anchor the end of the zipper against the table so I can pull the tape nice and tight. Then when I attach the slide, I'm going to make sure that those ends are even before I pull down. So I'm going to slide one side in. Again, I'm using my rounded end because I have two pieces of zipper tape. I'll pull my other slide in and then I want to pull it nice and taut before I give that slide that little push and then I can pull down on it. I'm not going to have any wrinkles and bubbles in there because they were nice and tight when I started. Okay, our links are marked and our slides are attached. You've learned how to attach slides on zipper tape with fabric at the ends as well as on cut zipper tape. And you've learned to attach the slides from either the rounded end or the flat end and in luggage style configurations. Step three is to move the slides into the marked sections of the zipper tape. Start by moving one slide into the first marked 15 inch section of the tape, all the way at the other end. This will make our first 15 inch single slide zipper. There we go. Then we'll move the next two slides into the next 15 inch section. Then 
This will make the 15 inch zipper with two slides going the same direction which we'll use for the divided pocket. Finally, we'll move the last two slides into the 28 inch mark section to make the 28 inch double slide luggage style zipper. If you had to attach an extra slide to even up your ends, you'll pull it down first and then we'll get rid of it when we cut the zippers apart. One more tip. Remember this 30 inch zipper that we marked to make two 15 inch zippers? Note that because this is a luggage style zipper, the zipper's going to separate when you move a slide into each section. But no worries, I'll show you how to deal with that in the next step. For now, just get a slide moved into each section. Once our zipper slides are moved into the various sections, we have just a couple more quick steps before our zippers are ready to go. Step four is to create zipper stops on the zipper tape to prevent the slides from coming off once we cut them apart. We'll stitch an eighth of an inch to each side of the marked lines and on the end. Go slowly when you go over the teeth. Just a single line of stitching will stop the slides from coming off if we happen to move the slide all the way to the end. On the 30 inch luggage style zipper which we're cutting, the zipper is separated. So just hold the tape together and stitch through it. If you want a little bit more stability at the end, you can always back stitch across the teeth or stitch through everything twice. Our last step, step five, is to cut on the marked lines to create the zippers needed for the project. I usually use my rotary cutter and just go right on the marked line in between my two stitching lines, but you can use scissors too. Either one works. All right, wasn't that easy? We've got the three zippers needed for our project ready to go and we still have zipper tape and slides left for another project. Just pop these into a bag and they'll be ready to go the next time you need a Parrot Blue zipper. So there you have it. You've learned how to make your own zippers in a variety of lengths and styles. Single slide, double slide, multiple slide, and luggage style. Note that in addition to our Zippers Are Easy video series, we've also prepared a downloadable PDF to help you remember the five steps. You'll find it, along with other helpful resources, at byannie.com zippers. Here's an important tip about zipper length. We always try to use a zipper at least two to three inches longer than the piece into which it is being installed. This allows the zipper to overhang on each side so that we can avoid any stops on the zipper ends and we can also move the slides out of the way. Notice how the zipper tape on this double slide zipper bulges out next to the zipper slides. Then notice how the bulge disappears as I move the zipper slides along the tape. By moving the slides all the way to the end of the zipper, I can avoid that bulge, making it much easier to sew my zipper in place with a straight seam. Let's talk next about how to install a zipper. We'll begin by talking about the method we use most often. Whether we're installing a zipper in a pocket or between two strips to make the opening in the top of the bag, this is the method we use. Let's watch part of the add-on video for our free Call Me pattern to see our most common zipper installation process. With right sides together, the zipper opening and slide to the left, and the zipper on top, clip the long edge of the zipper to the pocket, allowing the zipper to extend beyond the quilted fabric on each end and slightly beyond the fabric along the long edge. Notice that using a zipper longer than the pocket allows us to avoid any stops and ensures that we'll get a straight, even stitch because the zipper slide is out of the way and won't distort the zipper tape. Extending the zipper tape slightly beyond the pocket at the top makes it much easier to hide the raw edges on this seam. Sew the zipper to the pocket, stitching a generous quarter inch from the edge along the long edge. After the zipper is sewn to the pocket, finger press the zipper tape to the inside of the pocket, then sew along the very edge of the zipper tape, flattening the tape against the pocket as you go. This will enclose the raw edges and produce a nice quarter inch top stitching on the outside of the pocket. 
I like to use my stiletto to push any loose threads and raw edges under the zipper tape. Running it along the seam line really encourages the fabric to fold over, making it easier to hide the raw edges and stitch along the edge. When we installed the zipper in our quilted fabric pocket, we put the right sides together and we finger press the seam to the lining side to enclose all the raw edges. If we attached a zipper in the same way to a mesh or vinyl pocket, we would see those raw edges through the front of the zipper. There are a couple of ways that you can avoid that messy look. We'll talk about both. Let's start by installing a zipper in a mesh pocket. The process will be almost the same as for the quilted fabric pocket with one important difference. Rather than placing right sides together, we'll position wrong sides together. Let's watch part of the add-on video for our free pattern Peacekeeper to learn the process. Because of the see-through nature of mesh, we attach the zipper to the pocket a little bit differently than we do when attaching a zipper to a piece of fabric, so pay attention. One thing to also pay attention to is, especially if you've made your zipper using zippers by the yard, we pulled our zipper pull on from this end, and this is actually the open end, so I need to make sure I pull this all the way down so that I've got um, the open end down here because we always want to close our zipper to the left open it to the right so this is what our pocket's going to look like when we're done we've got our mesh pocket with our zipper at the top and the slide on the left but what we're doing different on this that we don't do normally when we attach a zipper to a fabric pocket or a quilted pocket we sew them with right sides together so we'd if this was our pocket we'd have our zipper aligned and we'd sew along this edge that way once we have them sewn and we finger press our zipper um, down we're stitching on the inside but if we did that on mesh we'd have all those raw edges showing so what we want to do on mesh is that is attach it so that once we fold it over our zipper tapes on top so we're going to sew with wrong sides together we want to have the zipper slide on the left and the mesh on top and we're going to clip those together so zipper sides zippers on the bottom with the slide to the left we've got our mesh on top and then we're going to clip those together letting the zipper hang out on each end and also letting the zipper extend just a little bit beyond the mesh on the long edge. This way when we sew it in and fold it over, we don't have these little pokey ends of mesh hanging out. Our next step is to sew the mesh to the zipper, stitching a quarter inch seam along the long top edge. I want to make sure again that my zipper is a little bit beyond my mesh, so usually I will stitch this from the back so that I can keep my eye on that. However, it's actually easier to stitch from the front, especially if you're using a quarter inch foot because the edge of your foot can run around, run, run along there. So you could stitch it from that side too. If you do that, just make sure that you don't see any zipper tape poking out as you go. You don't want to see that because then you're going to have to figure out how to hide it. So just keep that back down below. If you do decide to stitch from the zipper side, when you do your clips, make sure you put them with the flat part on the bottom. And keep in mind that this stitching is going to show on the outside of the zipper. So you might want to use a thread that matches the zipper in both the top and the bottom. I'm going to use white thread so that you can really see the lines more easily, but you'd probably want to match them. After the zipper is sewn to the mesh, then finger press the zipper tape to the front of the mesh and sew along the very edge of the zipper tape, flattening the tape against the mesh as you go. This will enclose the raw edges of mesh. You would follow that very same process to install a zipper in a vinyl pocket. Position the vinyl and zipper with the wrong sides together, allowing the zipper to extend on each end and at the top. Stitch together with a generous quarter inch seam. Finger press the zipper tape to the front of the vinyl pocket and stitch along the very edge of the zipper tape. There is another method that you can use to attach a zipper to mesh or vinyl. It involves binding the upper edge of the pocket with fabric and then attaching the bound edge to a zipper. That's the method that we used on this running with scissors and this ruler wrap. 
We feel that binding the edges of the mesh helps give some extra stability on these bags. Begin by binding the edge of the pocket. Then run a piece of basting tape along the back of the binding and align the bound edge of the pocket on the zipper. Finally, stitch along the top and bottom of the binding to secure the pocket to the zipper. I have one more method of zipper installation to show you, and that is using just one side of a piece of zipper tape for the zipper. We use this method for our flipping out bags and the zippered bag in the glow and go pattern. The beauty of this method is that you can make two bags with just one zipper. We're going to use footage from the add-on video for flipping out to show you the process of attaching the zipper. Note that we are working with just one side of the zipper tape and that the zipper slide is not attached. Begin by cutting off the stops on each end of the zipper. Remove the zipper slide or slides and set aside. Then separate the zipper to make two pieces of zipper tape. Set aside one piece of tape and the extra slide if you started with a double slide zipper for another project. You could also use zippers by the yard to make the zipper. Just cut the zipper tape to the length needed for the case that you are making, at least 24 inch for a small or 40 inch for a large. Separate the tape and set aside one piece for another project. Now we're ready to attach the zipper to the case. I'm going to stitch with a pink thread as I attach the zipper so that you can see the lines of stitching. You may prefer to switch to a thread that blends with your zipper to make the stitching less obvious. Position the body with the main fabric side up. Then align the zipper tape along the long curved edge of the body, positioning it right side down with the fabric portion of the tape along the curved edge. Allow the end of the zipper to extend a half inch or more if using a longer zipper beyond the fabric at the starting end. The long edge of the zipper should also extend about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch beyond the edge of the fabric. This enables us to more easily hide our raw edges when we finish the zipper. Then stitch the zipper in place sewing with a generous quarter inch seam and gently easing around the curves. Wasn't it fun to see how easy it is to attach a zipper to a curved edge? For the flipping out bag, you would next attach a gusset to each side of the bag. We'll rejoin the video after that step to show how to complete the zipper. Now we're ready to finish sewing down the edge of the zipper tape to hide all these raw edges. Again, I'm using pink thread, but you may want to make sure that your bobbin thread will blend with the main fabric. This line of stitching will show on both the zipper tape and the main fabric side of the bag. Finger press the zipper tape to the lining side of the body. Being careful not to catch the finger loop in the seam, sew along the very edge of the zipper tape all around the bag, enclosing all the raw edges and creating a line of top stitching on the other side. Here's a tip. Use a stiletto to help hold the zipper tape in place and to push any loose edges or threads under the zipper tape as you stitch. Now we're ready to attach the zipper slide. To ensure that our zipper closes right at the center of the bag, we need to make sure that we attach the slide at the proper place. So our first step will be to trim the zipper tape so that it is even on each side. With the right side out and the top of the case toward you, 
Bring the zippered edge of the bag body together and align the bottom edges. Then trim the zipper tape evenly across the end, ensuring that there is at least a half inch of zipper tape extending beyond the edge of the body. The next step is to attach the zipper slide. Bring the ends of the zipper tape together with the teeth up. Position a zipper slide so that the rounded end, the end with two channels, is facing the zipper teeth. At a slight angle, insert the left side of the zipper tape slightly, about halfway, into the left channel of the zipper slide. And I usually use my finger to kind of pinch and hold that together. Then, in the same manner, insert the right side of the zipper tape slightly, about halfway, into the right channel of the zipper slide. Again, only going about halfway down. Keep the zipper tape even as it goes into the slide. The trick on this is to not go too far into the zipper slide, so only go about halfway. Then, tap gently on the end of the zipper slide to set it. You will hear a slight click as it engages with the teeth. Then, simply grab the slide and pull it onto the zipper tape. Zip the bag closed, double-checking to ensure that the finger loop is centered on the zipper at the top, and that the ribbon border, if you used one, is aligned on each side. So for instance, on this bag where we did add a ribbon border, you want to make sure that it's even on both sides when you get that zipper slide on. Remove the zipper slide and adjust the placement if necessary to get it even. I hope you enjoyed learning these techniques and that they've helped you understand how easy it is to make and install zippers. Don't forget that our free Peacekeeper, Call Me, and Easy Does It videos and patterns all include great tips for installing zippers. You can download those patterns and videos free at Biani.com. We can't wait to see the projects that you make, so be sure to share pictures with us. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube by using at Patterns by Annie. You may also email pictures to us at marketing at Thanks so much for watching. Happy stitching!